Um, thank you very much for, for joining us here on Transport with Masatsi. Uh, we felt we should uh, touch base with you uh, to, see, to see how you're doing. Um, there has been some good stuff coming out of your life, um, given what we've been through. But before we go into the details, um, there's something that has always uh, interested me with you. For a player of your talent and skill and everything, you never got that South African theme of having a nickname. Uh, do you, I mean, there, was there ever a okay. nickname that stuck? Um, firstly, thank you for allowing me the platform to share my experience. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better audience than what I'm hoping my story can get through to and can help. Um, coming back to your question, uh, so obviously growing up at that time when I was younger was Zain Musa. Yeah. So they would refer to me as Magic Feet. Magic Feet, yeah. But as you grow older, you want your own name. And along the way you get the dribbling wizard, mm. which has stuck around for, for long. Then when you go to different clubs, different supporters give you a nickname. So you get Twinkle Toes. You get Nkutuzi when oh, yeah. it was at Swallows, and yeah. So, so, so those are the so few nicknames. So those are the, the different nicknames, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And then also I want you to clarify one thing here. There is a legendary story that you, Shibobo Dr. Kumalo, when you were still a, when you were still a kid. Uh, look, Do you remember uh, that moment? If I have to say it is something that stands out in my mind, I'd be lying. Because being with somebody associated with the name of that pedigree in any way would maybe mean that I'm needing to live off reputation of yeah, his. Yeah. But we've all come to a stage where we've managed to reclaim our own place in society, where it's something that I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember it clearly, yeah. but um, life is all about leaving impressions. Yeah. So if that clearly left an impression on somebody or in somebody's memory, then thank you, doctor. Mm. Mm. Yeah, now, um, talking about Doctor, uh, one of the best players we've produced in this yeah. country, uh, what is very strange, I'm told he's actually not the guy that, though you respected him and stuff, yeah. but you, know, you looked up to a different type of player. Um, as a player growing up, obviously, at that point, that was the most popular player and something that interested me, uh, that kept me interested in liking this sort of image was the hair was always escal <laughs> there was always gum being chewed yeah. the shorts was always rolled up yeah. the way of running and that is what the, so you try to imitate these players where they run the way they technically do their skills until you come to a point where you then start imitating the player who relates most to what you are good at so in this case the player that appealed to me most was Shoes more show. Mm. And then before even shoes, on another pedigree or level was Ernest and so on. Mm. So when you start learning football, you start knowing, okay, it's not about dribbling only. It's about the vision. Yeah. It's about the anticipation. It's about reading the game. It's about switching play, you know, from a hot pressure area to the opposite side. Um, the shooting, the, the football men, um, what do we call it? They call they have a term nowadays mm. where they say it's your game intelligence. So now the, the, the coaches show you videos and you want Ernest in Tawali. And yeah, that was but from a South African point of view for me, in that position, sure. sure, 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 sure yeah. And unfortunately we don't have we don't have those players anymore. We don't have those players and you know life is life is so strange because through your career, you then get the privilege of rubbing shoulders with them, whether it's at a training camp, national team training camp, whether it's at a trial, uh, whether it is even socially you become friends. So now you get to understand the different side of just the player. He lets you now into his personal space. Come and join me for a job. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about the attention you're about to receive. And then you find yourself being associated and sharing a house, a clubhouse, even if you stayed in the same room for a while before he's moved into your own place. Very privileged in my situation mm. because that was Steve Compella. Yeah. Then 
Okay, from a playing perspective, it is somebody totally different to what I would like in a player because I'm only attacking minded. So now you learn what is it to be a strong defender. You have to have a strong mind. And there is nobody ever compared to Steve Compera that is intellectually ready for anything that life offers mm. in any language. Mm. And of course, uh, you know, you, 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 you have an interesting story of what you shared with him. We'll talk about it later. Okay. I just want to check now. With, 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 with the, 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 the amount of talent and, and gift that God gave you, yeah. um, do, do you think you fulfilled your, your, your potential? Definitely. I was going to come to that before you even answered the question. Um, when I was in the facility that I was in, right, uh, we spent two to three months with psychologists, with therapists, trying to identify what is the deeper rooted trauma that is causing you to be so destructive. Okay, you've lost your parents, you've lost your dad recently, you've lost your mother 10 years ago, you've lost a younger brother when you were growing up, but then again, everybody has to experience that in some capacity, in some area of their life. Okay, so now the psychologist and psychiatrist is not happy with that being the trauma, that they are trying to identify what it is. So they do in-depth research of your life since you were growing up. And after a few months, we only figured out, right, we're calling everybody to the table, and this is what we're going to put our finger on, that your past celebration is your biggest trauma currently that is causing the underlying depression. You, so, you didn't live up to the expectations that who created, you created. You didn't live up to those expectations. And then I said, yes, I agree with you. So to put it ugly in ugly words, I underperformer. But then you need to realize something. Being through what you've gone through, there are players that have achieved less than you in football and in life. That is still making a living out of the game today. Whether it's in coaching, whether it's in commentary, you will only be concerned an underachiever the day we bury you. Mm. From today you are reborn, you're living again. Mm. We are going to achieve your dreams and use your life experiences. Even your mistakes is going to end up being your biggest blessing. We're going to achieve that dreams through others. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you're talking about the facility you were in. And you know, obviously yeah. um, the, the, a lot of things happened that led you into that situation. And uh, it's something that has been spoken much about and yeah. it's something which you want to speak about because okay. you want people to learn from those mistakes. Now, um, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the football career, but yeah. just to sort of zoom in into um, some things went wrong um, in, your, in your life as you, as you went about. Where does the sort of Look, problem start and firstly, how deep were they? Firstly, I'm not a, at the stage in my life now where there's any room for excuses. I'm going to say things that experience and the way I see it and I'm going to hold nothing back. Um, personally, the minute you run away from the morals and standards that your parents have drilled into you is the minute you're going to find interaction with Satan. So the minute you think that you are earning more money to sit at the table with your mother and your father and you feel that power shift taking his responsibilities onto your shoulders without you at that point even being able to afford the petrol to take you to training but you feel that because you're now starting to get a name you are set for millions and you're now misunderstanding the motivation when he says to you we want you to, to buy your own house. We want you to make our dreams come true and pay our house up. But those are things that kept you waking up earlier for, early for training. That used to knock on your door when everybody is sleeping and say, you need to take the day before everybody else. You need to be up at four o'clock in the morning and be running. You know, you, now you take it to another level. I said, daddy, what is your dreams? Mommy, what is your dreams? We want to go for pilgrimage, but we can't afford it. You are going to take us for pilgrimage. So now you start earning crazy money. 
the first thing you do when you earn is your mother leaves work, your father leaves work, you pay the house up, you extend the house and you give them their dream. You send them for pilgrimage. While they are on pilgrimage, what are you doing? So now your auntie phones you, you see your parents on CNN, they are in Mecca. You are having a party at your house because your parents are there. The girls are there, you're taking off, we call it rakams, you know, these things that have the spiritual things on the walls. You turn it around, there is, you inviting ladies, alcohol, because you can afford this lifestyle. But you are not realizing how far you are drifting from God when your parents are at the closest to the man that all things are possible. All the luxury you are receiving, all the privileges you are receiving. And this is where I lost it. Mm. It's when I drifted away from the morals and principles that my parents is told in me. Mm. When you have the right to, if your father says something, when he asks me, go fetch me a glass of water. You have to shake because I'm hoping to fetch him a glass of water quick enough. But now you ask me, fetch me a glass of water, I'm like, I gave you money, didn't you buy aqua? Didn't you buy bottled water? But now, he's going to stay to you, to ask you this question. When I got you running around the lake so many times, did you have a water bottle? I said, no. You become, said, so what are you, are you, you become bigger than your, you can't become bigger than your God. And honestly, in so many different religions, we refer, refer to our Father. When we pray at school, our Father who art in heaven. Okay, so who is your, who is your God in your house? It's your father, it's your mother. When he asks for something, maintain the respect. You are never too big for them. The minute you drift away from their teachings, you are destined for doom. You're doomed to be, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not as articulate as I want to be because so many, so many things have changed. Yeah. And um, I'm just fortunate to be able to relay the story and hoping you guys can yeah. understand what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, the minute you move away from God, the minute you move away from your parents, your parents and God is that is your that is your life. Yeah. That will that will now um, uh, shape you to be the person that you are, even if you go through difficulties. This is the result today of the morals and, and standards my parents drove into all the all my siblings that it was my sister who said, listen here, we understand there's so much mental damage, there's probably no, the psychosis is on another level. I mean, um, it was at the stage where I felt that I can predict the weather. Um, the clouds are following me. If I wear a certain design on my clothes, um, the clouds will come in that design. If I wear yellow, before sun said the sky will be yellow. So now you, now you, you've lost it completely. And even at that point, when I used to say to her, I can bring the moon out, I can make the sun follow me. Um, she was like, listen, we, I'm not giving up hope. Yeah. Uh, we're fetching you, we're going, for, we're going to get help within the next week. That was on a Friday. The Monday she was there. But now, remember, who did I lose the Monday before that? too late to your biggest fan and your biggest critic. My father had passed away. Now! So your father passed shortly before you went into rehab? One week after my father passed, I was in rehab. My father's dead for two years. I'm two years clean now. Now, um, how deep was this thing? <clears throat> if I say to you, sleeping with Satan, it's an understatement. Uh, firstly, you lose your sanity. Within a short space of time, you lose your vanity. And once you look into the mirror every morning and you don't recognize this person anymore, you are in trouble. If you don't recognize what you stand for, everything you good you've done in the past, He's gone. He's gone. You'd never be able to stand up. And the only way in rehab that made me start believing that the miracle is possible is where one day when I went to the mirror and I said, okay, now, irrespective of what you've been through, now I think you can still capture the attention of a woman. 
because you've gotten used to that in your life. The attention, the ladies. Um, but now you're begging on the street. Uh, you can't go from there to there. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to land in between. Mm. Um, you, your children, my children has been unbelievable because not once did they show me disrespect. But where I could see the difference is if I maybe pitch up at a school event. They can see because you, you don't look the part, you know? And they are at, at schools. Yeah. All their other their friends' parents are well groomed. You you don't look the part. Now you can maybe and you only identified, okay, maybe there's a little bit of embarrassment here. But that doesn't stop you from going to take the next hit. So how much embarrassment aren't you causing your kids when their friends are at the stage and they're old enough to say, we heard your father is an addict. How does the child concentrate? You need to know now the extent of the damage you're causing. Not only to yourself, because yourself you are raping. You are raping yourself. You are basically killing your parents long before they close their eyes. Because you, it harms them. Now everybody that it affects. It affects your children, it affects your sister, it affects your brother, it affects your mother, it affects your father. Mm. So, what did you take? I mean, what, what? I started on, on CAT. My first experience was with drugs was ecstasy. Then it went on to cat, and this was when things were good. Through being, through using cat, I start. I used to stay not too far from here. The casino is around the corner. Um, and when I came back from Malaysia, I stayed here. Uh, obviously, the money wasn't coming in every month, but I still had a bond to pay. But together with substance, I started gambling. So the first two, three months, the casino was taking care of my responsibilities. You, I was an addict, but it wasn't noticeable. I was functional. I still had the cologne. I could still spray my blue jeans. I could still be dressed in designer. I would still meet the necessary rich boys in the casino. And I would still love and play the part. But after a few months, it wasn't long. Everything was gone. Everything was gone. So, sorry, I, my concentration is not what it used to be. Mm. What was the question? The question was, what did you take? You, you yes. talked about escatip. Okay. Then you yes. went to Christ other stuff. And then crystal meth. Mm. Uh, during my first interaction with Kat, my mother had already been diagnosed with cancer before that. So, when she passed, I went on to crystal meth. Let me give you a, clear, a little bit of an indication what substance does. It camouflages everything you're supposed to feel, you don't feel it. So you lose your mother. When you take your next die, just after that you run and you, you take a hit, things are going to be okay. You, she, you make yourself feel better. She's with God. When are you going to be with God? Why in your life she was with God? In person, she prepares herself to close her eyes. So with the, on the day of judgment, when she needs to answer, she can answer. But you are the reason why. She might not enter the gates of heaven. You need to be, you need to be reminded, but no, that doesn't matter. I, everything is going to be all right. I will change one day. And I, I, I'm told probably the, the lowest of the lowest that you weigh in was when you're homeless, living on the street. You know, the funny thing is, uh, my dad had had enough of my obnoxious behavior. Uh, I would come home after three or four days having not slept, and I would go to the fridge and what is there to eat? And okay, so now you're becoming like an animal. Okay, you didn't bath. So he was just, he needed to do something. He didn't know what can he do. And he said to me, listen here, I've had enough. Move out of my house. And you are arrogant because you still think you tonight at me. You don't consider yourself once as a bum. Sorry for my language. As, 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 as somebody that doesn't command, somebody that doesn't deserve respect. Uh, you don't know where that food came from, where the plate, of the plate on the table came from. But you come in there and you take anything you want in the freezer. My dad said, no ways, move out. I said, okay, no problem. I know up the road, 
It was a school I used to attend. It was called Grace College. It is now dilapidated. And the easiest place when there was somebody at home and for me to go and smoke, I used to go and smoke in those classrooms. So here the one night I'm laying in this classroom and I'm thinking, hey man, this was my class. Mm. Okay, now who pays for you to go to school at this? Because it was a private school sponsored by Anglo. Hey, what's paid for me? They paid for my schooling. They paid for my teachers. When I used to come home, end of the month, and end of the month get paid. I buy my whole class chicken liquor. If KFC. Okay, my friends uh, that we drink, I'll buy them the drinks at that time. But now look what they're not taking the lesson in life. As brought you sleeping in this dilapidated classroom. And at that time, you're finding yourself having to beg for money, having to look for something to eat. And as long as I had money for my packet of crystal meth and a little bit of acha and half a loaf, I was fine. Mm. Mm. I was fine. But you know, you lose, your dignity is gone, your pride is gone, because you're now standing on corners of shops to beg for money. You're having to go and knock on the door of your neighbors. Fortunately, they always had hope, the people in the community, that they will invite you in, even before you knock. Please come and have a meal with us. And while you're having the meal, is, okay, can you, can, you, can you meet us in the mosque next week? While you're busy, busy begging at the shop, a priest comes, please come and speak to me, come to church this weekend. Um, I've even had people from so many different walks in life say to me, come with us, it's Easter. come with me to Petersburg. Okay, let's go to Maria. Mm. Now fortunately, this is where I say South Africans are so black, so the mentality is so small, yet we, the privileges that are there for us is bigger than any other country. We have got insight to so many different cultures. The other people, I think I've explained it to you, go and sit in the sauna. Yeah. They go and break a sweat in the sauna, the rich, or even today, the ordinary is even sitting in the sauna. The people have saunas in their houses. Let's go back to basics. We want to steam, we want to break a sweat. Go to the one place, put the blanket over your head, you're going to feel what is the sauna. Mm -hmm. But now use that period for meditation. Because this is the modern thing, meditation. But it's something that has been installed in us by our parents from day one. Mm. If you want a Christmas, a, a Christmas from Father Christmas, close your eyes and ask him. Then you close your eyes, you visualize Father Christmas is coming and dropping your, parent, your present under the tree on Christmas Day. What happens? The, the present is there. So now they're teaching you on how to visualize, how to pray, how to meditate. Every day starts feeling like Christmas after that mm. because you now are grateful. You show gratitude for the plate of food that has come through Father Christmas. Do you understand? Yeah. This is why I can't understand and this is what I think was the biggest part of my recovery is getting back into touch with the spirituality, and everything around me that exists, all the people that exist around me, they've had major influence in me getting back to normality. Because coming out of the facility after a year, um, we come back to how I ended up there for a year, hold on. Yeah. Uh, that is where the problem started. Because now, you are not in a safe, in a safe environment anymore. Now you're going to be tested. So many different things is going to test you. Firstly, you look for for the people that look you okay, now you're looking where's my where's my wife? Yeah. Okay, she has moved on. Children. Okay. Where's my children? Now it's ten years later. Life goes on. They've moved on. And they haven't moved on, they've moved with their mother into things. Others haven't moved on they've moved on or tried to move on and things didn't work, but they still maintained everything else. Um now you say, okay, now I heard that they moved on while I was using, but now in this case, let's say I'm going to call a spade, a spade here. Mm. And, okay, now you've gotten a used to a standard of living maybe, you've gotten used to a way of doing things, you've gotten to go for massages every day, whether it was here, whether it was in Malaysia. So obviously when you can't do that, what's going to happen? 
somebody is going to knock on the door, my friend, somehow. It's going to send a like on Facebook. And then they're in touch. And now that person, she says she's got a problem with the toilet. He says, no problem, I'll send my handyman. And then that's the beginning. And you are too into the life that you are in and only thinking about yourself and how are you going to get, you can't even sense danger. Mm. Yet you could sense when the defender was five steps, ten steps behind you. Oh, you yeah. knew where he was before you received the ball. You were taught to... To, to look, to, yeah. yeah, what is this called? You were taught to screen. You were taught to screen every aspect of life. That you knew you could, hey, let me slow down the robot this far, but that guy's coming to skip the robot. Why? Football has taught me how to look around and to see things before they happen, before it happens. In this case, substance blinds you from all that. Okay, now it is out. You can't deny it. Your wife has moved on. You knew this, but now is the challenge. What has she moved on with? You find ice. This is your own things coming back to want to because when you were driving Z3s when other people were in school, here you are up against the guy that has taken your wife and looking after your children that drives a Ferrari. Now is your challenge. What are you going to do mm. to maintain <coughs> this lie in your head that you are somebody? Now is your time to show me you are a playmaker. Now you want to be creative. Be creative. Just as you try and think about so many things to maintain yourself, to and sustain pressure, yourself. Eh? Because now, I need to when the children for me. They got the news to. If we want to make them, don't get and even worse now in today's time because I've fallen so far behind the rest of the world. They just phone. If they need, if they need something for a vanity set, the stepfather they can phone. Take a lot. Now you never heard of take a lot in your life. Ten years, fourteen years, you in isolation. Now, now it's where the trouble starts because this can force, can cause you to relapse. Mm. Because remember, you're looking for any excuse why life is unfair. Now, like you're saying, I mean, more than ten years just yeah. in this yeah. uh, drug addiction yeah. and uh, not doing anything with your life. Yeah. Um, what clicked to say? Yeah, and normal. I've gone and go and uh, seek help. All right. Honestly, I was too far into addiction to realize myself in what trouble I was in. It took my sister, my brother, my brother-in-law, mostly my sister and my brother-in-law took the bull by the wounds and took me to court. And they call it Section 33. And in court, it was, they explained that we've just lost our dad, and this is how destructive this person has become. And it, I wouldn't be surprised if he continues on this, on this path, that he, would, he wouldn't be around for, for much longer. And this are the, these are his kids. He's got four kids. Um, they need their father. I need you to do us a favor, please. And what is that? Put him away for no less than a year. At an institute that I will choose. So I'm not even asking you to put him away at an institute that the government chooses. Because it's up to him. He can choose. He either goes with what we have chosen or he goes with what the state has chosen. Mm -hmm. Nothing less than one year, two months, three months. Before he's before he's before he can be discharged, mm. and, and then there's assessments on a weekly, on a monthly basis that we would get at the courts and from from the rehab to the courts, and that will actually get us to a point where we think, okay, he's ready to face society. But make no mistake, it's hard. Um, the place, the institute that I was in was really good. Firstly, I'm a Muslim, and this is a faith-based Christian rehabilitation center. Now, remember when this lady says to me, when the prosecutor says to me, uh, we want you no longer than one year, two months. I want to, that was in Pretoria. I want to come to a place where I'm comfortable. 
So I said to my sister, can't we go to a place that's closer to home? Uh, that is a Muslim. She said, hey, don't even try. Right now, I will bring you your prayer mat. I will bring you your Quran. You do what you know, your spirituality doesn't leave you. They're not going to feed you pork because they know you're a Muslim. But what they're going to do is they're going to get you a halal steak that you must make because you're not used to making your own food. You must got everybody else around you mm. doing things for you. Now we're going to teach you independence and how to get yourself back. I have no doubt there's no other facility in South Africa that based their recovery on neuroscience. So you need to know the, new, the pathways, uh, the serotonin, the dopamine levels of what your training used to, the highs your training used to give you and the highs your substance used to give you. These are the only people that have got the knowledge to put it together. And I was totally lost in the facility in the beginning because everybody was either younger than me or a little bit older. So the little bit older ones were your alcoholics, but professionals, accountants, doctors, lawyers, and the younger ones was guys that only going to talk about Netflix, uh, PlayStation, which is nothing that interested me. The older ones are talking about cryptocurrency. Here you are dealing with somebody that had the privilege to deal with forest currency at 14, 15 he was buying duty free, had a cell phone before everybody else. Today he doesn't know how to operate WhatsApp. Uh, he doesn't know, okay, Facebook everybody knows, but I mean, um, I don't know other things. No, you don't know what is available, what is going on in the world. Social media. I Social know. media, you don't know, you don't know what's it. People used to take photos of you when you were an addict. You still thought you were a star. It was circling on social media. You're a beggar today. Mm. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, these are... So, my sister, actually, because of... And then you got to put it down to... And you can't look past the fact that she is and got the mentality she has. Why? She knows who's a parent. She knows who's a god. She knows what she sees in her husband is the similarities that is in her own family. So automatically today, his family is her family. Mm. Easy to fit in. I mean, uh, Jeanette, I think to when we step, we're gonna step over this topic now, I think, okay. and also to make it clear to people that we are not talking about this to make fun of you or what, but you yeah. you want people to 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 hear your story. A land for experience. Look, um, to be honest with you, I was too high to actually be bothered by people making fun of me. Um, this time, I have no problem if people make fun of you, if people scare you on a pedestal, if others criticize you, no problem. There's no comment in the result column. You can't run away from what people say and what people view you as. You can't run away from your responsibilities and your duties. And you need to now be aware because you're aware of things again. You need to now, what motivates me personally is the impact you can have on others. In terms of soccer, if you see the youngster is passing better, controlling better, you see the confidence he comes to training with, uh, he comes to training earlier, he wants to spend more time, uh, he starts improving, now you put your thinking cap on, okay, how do I keep him motivated? How do I identify his currency? Because I need to know what makes him tick. You know, so if you know chocolates, if you do me a hundred um, taps, juggles with the ball, you get this chocolate. If you do me 500, you'll get this coloring. Mm. You need to now figure out, and now your past, positive things of your past development creeps in. And uh, it took me one year to get back what the coaches have taught me. I'm talking about the big coaches, so that I can implement it in my own sessions. Mm. So you don't just go from weaving through cones, weaving through cones, okay, I'm going to show you how a train moves, a car moves, what that, no, no. I need to get you mentally stimulated to activate as much things as possible in the shortest time possible. So now you know what skill to use to come out of a difficult 
action. You are surrounded by three defenders. You know what skill to use. You know what pass to use after the skill. I need to then equip you with the tools to give you those skills. So now you've got to put together your training methods. And you've got to use what I term, and people in football term, use the term progression. Yeah. Um, but now you need to bring it down to basics. You need to go to pre-primary school, go and sit in the class there, and look at the way they teach, so that it's easy to remember. So now you're dealing with children or age appropriate, different, of different age groups, and now you can structure your sessions accordingly. And when you get that right, you see that you start loving your life according. Because football, I said to you before, this after God is the most forgiving game mm -hmm. you can find. If I score an own goal now, the whole stadium, how do they feel? Disappointed. Like you've committed a sin. If on the other end, I create a goal and score a goal in the next two minutes, have they forgiven me? They forgive. the, no game in life can forgive you more than football as quick as this. Not even your wife can forgive you and get over it as quick as football. Today, football, because it's being the most forgiven game, has brought me back to being who I am. I can work with, I can work with my shoulders out yeah. again. And that doesn't mean I'm forgetting about the wrongs I did. But I'm going to make sure that I don't repeat those mistakes. How long have you been clean? Two years. Just over two years. Completely? Completely. Completely. But there's still so many years for me to recover. You can't make up for lost time. No chance. But there's a lot of years that I need to recover because of the amount of mental damage that was done. Um, if I tell you I couldn't structure a sentence into my, in my first three or four sessions of therapy, I couldn't find the right words to put in the right contents to explain what is happening. So it's still going to take a little bit of time for me to recover completely. And if you think about it, for me, every day is going to be a recovery for the rest of my life. Now, you were a very good footballer. Uh, let's talk football now. Okay. Um, where does everything start for Junior Tatlin as a footballer, as a kid? You know, this is, it comes back down to your first visualization. So now you watch the TV and you see the different players at that time. It was most popular were your Maradonas mm. and the World Cup is so big and you want to imitate what you see on TV. So all your other friends want to be Superman and you see them in a Superman outfit <laughs> for Christmas with the red eye. They are jumping into some of them from the roof into the swimming pool. And now you are Superman, you want to be on the field. Uh, your father sees when you're playing in the passage, when you're playing in the yard. Okay, but this guy, they say, is not good at school. But how does he know all the players from Chiefs, all the players from Pirates? When he kicks against the wall, he says, Sheikh uh, Paben. If he passes it that side, he says, If he passes it to the right, you know, number 13, Bashan Mashlangu. So he knows numbers, he knows names. He knows which players belong to which teams. Uh, you even know the nicknames. If you say, I see some attack, you know this mm. guy's going to break the net. Look at the technique he uses. So now when you are playing in the yard, you are imagining every time you receive the ball, you are this guy. So now you want to be Neil Tovey, you want to be Dr. Kumalo. Uh, and, and this is what makes the difference. Mm. So now you go and play at your club. You find that in training out, things are coming together. Your father after school is putting bricks in the yard. This is the skill we're working on. In the mornings, you are running. He, and then he says, hey, I can't leave my son to run this time of the morning. It's the traffic. What does he do? He wakes you up, he joins you for the run. Even if you're running there, he's behind you. He says, this is where I'll be for the rest of your life. He's behind you trying to achieve that dream. Mm. On Saturday, Sundays, when your mother, when you, when you go and play, your mother is there in the car. She's got on the same colors like your team. Um, but this is where the dream starts. The dream is a family, a family dream. And if it doesn't work, I'm fortunate with my parents. My parents, when I, the first time I appeared in the Sunday Times, I was eight years old. Uh, somebody came to drop the newspaper at the gate. Uh, the mighty merged 111 goals a season. In the same article, and I only made, I only recognize it this year, is a photo of me and three of my teammates. And with us in the photo is my sister as a baby. 
the, this photo and this article is next to each other. Did my parents have the vision that even in their children's worst times, we will be able to know that you will be able to tell a positive story mm. if the baby grows up because of the morals and standards taught to the siblings. But you as the eldest, at some point in your life, has to set an example. If you, I'm not saying I was the best son. Um, at the time, I was considered the best son in the world, but I can't run away from reality. What I've done wrong has erased all of that. People don't want to know uh, the good you've done, and you will find that they don't even remember that uh, you send this lady to the doctor, you pay for it. You send that one for an operation, you see to it. You send food here, you, they won't even remember that when you go down. Mm. But the morals are in, that taught to your siblings, those are the ones who's coming to save you. Now, in brief, um, vets, how was vets? Vets, um, on another level. Um, let me tell you why. Because, firstly, at that time, um, vets was white. So, you coming there, the only person of color, at eight years old, uh, you don't know that there will be one or two parents that will say, hey, you're curry mancha. You don't even know what is that. But what gets everybody attracted to you immediately is that you play start your first game as goalkeeper, you receive the ball, you take the ball, you go past everybody, you score. You receive the ball again as goalkeeper, you score the second goal. By the time you score a hat trick as a goalkeeper, the coach says, never. <laughs> You're no longer playing goalkeeper ever again. Go inside. Go inside. <laughs> so now you score goals, they make you a striker in your first year. You go in your first tournament, you've never lived in a hotel. At eight years old, I wasn't in a hotel. If my mother took me to Mshlanga, my father took me to Mshlanga, I don't remember that. At eight years old, it's the first time I'm alone. Holiday Inn. It's a weekend tournament. Here, you know, we come to that tournament, I'm a striker. We win the tournament, I get play of the tournament. My mother gets the loudest voice, best fan, best mom, best supporter. Yo, now your parents are now shocked now. Hey, are we onto something here or not? Uh, your father doesn't let, the, let it run away with him, he's realistic. Hey, but you, now you hear, the, you hear the talks. Okay, the next tournament is Newcastle. Hey, but you hear this, there's, there's a financial issue. But now because you've proven your value to the team, who's going to pay for that trip? The rich boy's mother is going to make sure that you give her son the medal as well. She's putting you on the bus. You're going with them to the tournament. But your father doesn't want you to get used to those things happening. Yeah. You need to work for your own. And we as a family need to work towards ours. So the next tournament, Harry Smith, after Newcastle, me and my father's going alone, only us two were going. We had a red Toyota Corolla that my grandmother left him. I think it was a springboard or a car, I can't remember, a pool or something that crossed the road, and we hit it. The water pump burst. Hey, but this man has only got money for this trip. There's no plan for water pump. Somehow he spends the money to get it fixed so that we get to the tournament. We get to the tournament again, I get play of the tournament again. Now we don't have money to, to come, come home. Yeah. Yet, uh, I actually bought a watch like this on purpose. I can't remember the name he had this watch on, but it was, for that time, it was the watch. And we stopped by the garage and he went in. He said, I'm coming now. He went into the office, came back with the money. He says, I've got money too, to put in the petrol. And, um, at that time, one of the other players' his parents had pulled up in their Mercedes Benz. Uh, he played for Belfort Park. And he said, Mr. Hartley says, Are we on our way home, have a safe trip. He said, yeah. uh, What's the issue? I can see something is not okay. And he says, uh, My dad says, I have to leave my watch here so that we can get petrol to go home. He said, No, Chan, no ways. Let's go and fetch your watch. Go and fetch your watch. Uh, fill Don't your fill tank. Here's uh, pocket money for food on the way. Now this is the sacrifice this man and ma woman have gone through every day to see that you go to training, to see that you go to school. Mm. But you at that time are too young to actually acknowledge it. 
and you want to acknowledge it now when they are gone and the only way you can do it is by praying and ask God to open the gates of heaven but listen yeah you've got to make your heaven on earth right now yeah. for other kids not to experience the same difficulties but to make the same opportunities available to them based on your experience that was made available to you and to use that process and who are some of the players that you played with at Vets? as you um yes as you see with Vets, what happened is when when apartheid was now finished um and Vets, we were, we were doing well and at that time i could remember only one or two another boy was the only two colored players in the team i don't even need to i don't yeah, want to refer to it but it is what it is um and then we were doing so well and it was time for the Champions little league we were under 11. and we then combined me and this youngster and a player by the name of ryan hodgkins he ended up playing for Vets as well his nickname used to be zulu boy he was the right back we we combined with a team called can be from them visa called gloria you remember there was a female player gloria lele till today they say there is no better female player and i agree with that because i had experience of playing with her against her and the she had a team called gloria and we put the two teams together and we went in as them visa vets in that team was right of again not right of again um yeah it's it's an amazing move again play for them visa classic He's a teacher. He's a teacher. You should know him. They call him Ryder, man. Yes, Ryder. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't he was, think of... He, when he played with us, he was East Migration, Jackie Migration. I'm sure it's Ryder. I'm sure his name is... No forgetting. I'm not interested in not that. Not Ninja. N- not Ninja. Right back. Right back. Yeah. Very short guy. But he used to play sweeper. But technically very good. Had the best boots. Had six studs. Puma. Who's got six studs, Puma? Maradona. So now you automatically say, hey, this guy. Because when you're young, before you kick the ball, what do you look at? Ah, this one can play because he's got on Ronaldo's boots. <laughs> but when he runs there, he can't even cross the road. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but this is what you need to identify in youngsters and how to mm. keep them motivated. Mm. Um, yeah, and then that was juniors. And then as we got older, uh, then under 70 national team was when things became just crazy. Lovers I played with at Wits before everybody else, he was yeah, older yeah. than me. But on the seven national team from the start was Wayne Roberts, which turned pro with Cape Town Spurs. Um, Chapi Mutali. Yeah. Who ended and you up, guys went to the World Cup in Malaysia. Up, yes, yeah. who ended up being my best friend in life. Mm. Chapi. Chapi. Yeah. Uh, we shared so much, we went to Manchester United together. Yeah. Uh, we ended up at Maritzburg United together. Mm. So <laughs> there's a big difference in the MUFC mm. that we wanted to go and make well. it and to where we <laughs> ended up. Ended up at It was supposed to be Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> but then a uh, chap says to me, hey bro, we're sitting one day in Maritzburg. He says, you see, this is MUFC. <laughs> he said, but don't feel bad. I want to send you a picture. I said, where was this picture taken? He says, in Australia. Yeah. I said, who's in the picture? He says, you're drinking water, you're leaning on Quentin Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that team that went to World Cup was a very good team. Yeah, it's a your good team. Yeah. Steve Nicolaya. Uh, Benny. Benny. Stanton Frederick. Stanton Frederick. Yes, yes. It yeah. was just... It was just... You... A, listen. If you doubt... Mzunani Mgwigwi. Mzunani Mgwigwi, Ace Mbutu, Daniel Matao, Mangoba Mkizi, Nkibiteni Matombo, the right back. The yeah. right back. Yeah. Now, this, the difference between that team and every other team I've played in, there was unity, there was respect, there was brotherhood. They would respect, everyone would respect everybody's talent. Of the field, it was a party. Mm. It was a training session off the field because you love football. We loved one another. On the 17th, Jalron Barkley, Steve yeah. Likolea, Chapi Mutali, we loved one another. It, was, it wasn't just ordinary players bring, being brought to the same field and at the, the same time. You know? and, 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 and listen, make no mistake. Safa, don't underestimate the country and the 
the the the the what is it? What do you call this? Uh, the development. Don't underestimate it because the only thing, me personally, that I see that hasn't happened, there hasn't been continuity. When Trot was my under-17 coach, he knew everything about me. They want to tell me now Mourinho knows what size the player is. Trot knew that. He knew that in the classroom, if I give him this equation, at school, these different steps will take him how long to acknowledge, to grasp. I would now structure my training sessions accordingly. I have now known the personality of this player that if I kick him, this is how he's going to react. I need to now divert this in a positive way so that it benefits him. Mm. If I see he's talking to the referee too much, this comes from his club. No wait, it's going to end here. Now I'm going to prepare you. What does Trot Malot? What is Trot Malot? It's a coach. No. It's a teacher. He's a teacher. Yeah. Now, couldn't we then say, okay, the next under-17 coach, we're going to then introduce sports psychology so that we don't have the mental health issues. We are so, we, all of us have, are going through it. But we were afforded coaches that today I am more wealthier than what I've ever been. Why? Mental wealth. And I don't have a cent in my pocket. I've got the mental wealth because of the, the people, Sheikh Mashaba, different type. He knew how to get the best out of yeah. players. Uh, he knew if I have to drop you to get you to score for me two goals on your birthday in the World Cup. <laughs> I drop you for Nations Cup even though you scored in every game up to getting us qualified. Because you were caught with a girl in your room. I'm dropping you for this tournament. I thought the world is ending. This was the end of my career. They ended up runners up in Morocco. When he came back and he announced the squad to go to the World Cup, he included me. He didn't have to. First World Cup game, I started on the bench, which was new to me because in this under 20 team, I was one of the main players. Mm. I scored in every game. But he needs to teach you about life. Yeah. And he's going to teach you that football is the most forgiving. But I need to give you the tools to forgive yourself. So on your birthday, France, strikers Henri, Trezeguet and Yelka. That's their front line. We play against them, it's on my birthday. I, it was the second game, I started. It's not important who I started for, the mere fact is that I got my starting place back. They score first one. The ball gets played from the back, Stanton is playing striker and this is my best friend who is from the same area. But he's calling me, come, come, come. And I don't see why is this guy saying to me, come. Because the ball is on its way to him. He just lays it down. I shoot. It goes in the net, 1-1. One, one. Who I ran to the crowd, I started crying. Because you've been through a little bit of disappointment that was brought upon by myself. But listen, now you are forgiven. Football is the most forgiven game. Mm. Your birthday is on the 22nd of June. It's not long. You get the ball on your left, you've got the confidence. You don't care who you're playing against. Michael Sylvester or who, you take him. It's most now here now. It's a game now we can, you are afforded the stage to prove that you are one of the best. You are with the best on the field. You score again. 22, you score two goals. Now you, now, now you're crazy. Remember you went for trials at Manchester. When you were younger, you, want, you went to Swindon. Because of, at Swindon, there was red tape involved while yeah, we couldn't yeah. get signed. At Manchester, honestly, I would think of, we were not the type of players they were looking for. So to be frank with you, maybe in their eyes, we weren't good enough. Honestly. But I mean, this is life. So you've traveled everywhere looking for this dream. And who brings the dream to you? What did Iba brought the dream to you? You having to be dropped to make you realize that I'm going to give you the contract in Europe. The time we reached the hotel back from, back from the match, Mailbox was full. Mm. Clubs from everywhere. Everywhere in the world. Now, um, we're going to start wrapping <laughs> up now. Um, yeah. You went overseas. You spent time, yeah. some time in Portugal with, uh, with, uh, with the coach That's Steve. Well. In, uh, in Turkey. In Turkey. I mean, in Turkey, in Turkey with, coach um, with coach Steve. Yeah. You went in Portugal. Um, France. You, you went in France, yeah. for Lens. Yeah. Uh, you also went, in, in, went into, into Indonesia. Can you just compress your, your experiences overseas, how overseas was? Look, the first thing that I was fortunate 
when I went overseas when I was 15. Before that, I went to Swindon with Abel Chagla, Shongwe and Lavas Putlala. There, it's okay because you're going for trials, whatever. But the first time I went overseas to go and live there, because it was done deal, was when I went to Turkey. Um, I remember we were playing Swallows, Vets, first team, PSL, uh, Vets against Swallows. Steve was on the other team. Steve, uh, young Steve, young Steve, Steve Yeah, he was in, and then uh, in the stands, they were on holiday already. Steve Compella and the president of his club and the coach of his club at Mill Park. So, he, they, after the game, uh, Coach Augusto uh, came to me and said, hey, <laughs> I think we've got some interest here. It was between you and somebody else, but they want you. Um, and this, at this time, I think the amount of money that Vitz was asking was a lot. Because remember, they under the impression there's Swindon Town, Glen Hoddle wants him, mm. uh, Glen Hoddle is impressed with him. So the, the amount of money they wanted, even though they pay good in Turkey, the Turks weren't prepared to give that money to the club. In turn, they were prepared to give that money to the player and the family. So they said to my father, meet us in Commissioner Street at some lawyer's office the next day. And I go with him, but I sit in the car so he can go because I don't know with us. And they say, no, Compella is on his way. They need, because my father wants to know, hey, things are okay if the national team captain is here. Yeah. Because then we know automatically our son is in good hands. Are you with me? Hmm. Um, okay, so I didn't see must have met him there. But at the end of the meeting, my father is trying to look for me and I can't find him. He's got on a jacket that under this jacket, when he gets into the car, is just dollars. Oh. Hey. 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 My friend, I don't know what to say. <laughs> dollars. The next day, there's construction workers at our house. Ganda Gandas. They write the house down, half the house. Boom. Down. What's happening? Yeah, we're leaving Friday. All of us. We're going to take. Yes, sir. Uh, don't know what they discussed. Transactions was made between them. Me and the whole family, brothers, sisters, younger than me, to Turkey. Um, now, this house that is being renovated, bear in mind it was, it was a renovation that started years ago but went nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was no money. So, from a three bedroom, they were dreams of making it a five bedroom, six bedroom. They broke down. But there was nothing to keep to build up. And we were comfortable. And in our area, we were the only family that lived in the smallest house because half the house was broken down before we even actually had to have the money to renovate. So the minute the money came in, the last half that needed to be washed away so we can get the double story was the last part of the house. And that was when I went to Turkey. Mm. So we get to Turkey and now you can only, you can only, uh, we give you, allowance because your salary is going to your parents mm. yes sir. i've never in my life i was a hard worker i've trained hard i was an athlete at some point in my earlier stages of my schooling life i was a gymnast i knew pyramids i knew how to jump off springboards i've never experienced this level of professionalism in the way they go about training. And I'm not talking about football. I'm talking about pre-season training. So in the gym, in the mountain, it was on another level. So now you know what it takes to make it in Europe. And on top of that, who else better to be with than to teach you about life than Steve Compella? Mm. Who else better to teach you about fashion? Because this man's life is a catwalk. Everything he does is prim and proper. Uh, if you look at him, so now you learn, okay, you don't only know about all stars and dickies, now you know about Armani, Gianfranco Ferre, Versace, because you see Compella is smelling like blue jeans. Yeah. Oh, this guy smelling so nice. You even look at the incense. Is, it, is this guy wearing uh, this 
incenses that you burn to take the smell away. Mm. Uh, why does this guy smell so nice? And then he say, you ask him, Steve, what, are you, what, what is the smell? He says, hey boss, everything is the lion's head. He shows you Versace. Mm. Now your next payday, what do you do? You, you go, go straight. I want the Versace jeans, I want their money. Now you see he's wearing an, uh, the Turkish eye on his coat chain. You want that? You even walk like him. Because you're now in the gym. You're strong now. You walk like Steve Compella. You want to talk his type of English. <laughs> and then uh, you, read, you read all his books. You even read his CD covers. The men's, the range is so broad. Uh. His music that he chooses, his choice of songs is just, everything is perfect. But yeah. And then he experiences also some complications in his call up when they went to Nations Cup. Mm. And then you see the way he dealt with disappointment is the way you needed to deal with disappointment. And when Shakes called me back, it's the reason why I got the contract in France. Now France? Uh, France, okay, two years, I signed a five year contract. Two years, apprentice, three years professional. Okay, I already lived in Turkey and know what it takes to make it abroad. From a playing perspective, two years apprentice, I'm not happy. I want to play in the first team. So, okay, you train with the first team every day. That's you, and you play for the second team. Remember, you are only allowed five foreign players. If we register you for the first team, it's the sixth one. So this is why your two years, your first two years is apprentice, which I, I don't know. Uh, today, I would never go for that, even though it yeah. was very lucrative. Yeah. Because your career is more lucrative, your playing is more satisfying than the money. Mm. And players need to understand that. Don't negotiate what makes you happy. Playing makes you happy. Mm. The money will follow. Um, okay, so we made the decision, we're going this route. And um, obviously now in training, you are playing with Mark Vivian Fue. You are playing with Wilson or Ruma. These are your African brothers, right? Uh, and later on comes Alex Inyako. Now you are as a sportsman. Number one rule, need to be honest to yourself to avoid self-disappointment. So if I kill you at training, I know that, hey, I need to kill you every day. You are working for a position here, my friend. You understand? But if you kill me, I need to stay hey, hey, hey. I need to start learning and accept that this guy is better than me. How is he going to improve me? I am not going to use the excuse that he's got more experience and he's more older. Because I'm being given the same training field now. So I need to show, so there you show that you need to be playing in the first team based on performance. Mm. And this is where the situation came in that, listen, we need to loan him out to a first team, to a team where he's going to play first team football. And this is where Victoria Setubal comes in, Portugal. So we send him on loan to Portugal. But they send me on loan to Portugal with an injury. I trained the first day in Portugal immediately. They picked up, there's something not right, from the videos that we've seen to what we see now in terms of the way he's running. running yeah. There's a lump there. Okay, go to doctor, go to specialist, they can't tell what is wrong. At the time it must come for payment, pay time, end of the month. Even though I've got my signing on fee, everything in investments put away, uh, I can go and dig into that if I want to. There was a South African agent that managed most of the players. I don't even think his name needs to be mentioned because this is my time now. It's not their time. Um, um, did the deal in France, took his money, he had my investments there. But when I went through this problem and I said to him, you need to phone the French team because the Portuguese guys are saying that you send us an injured player, but how much we pay the salary at the end of the month? So this is between two teams. I just want to get this injury sorted out and get back to playing. So I book a flight to South Africa from Setuwan. Come to South Africa's Rosebank Sports Science Clinic. Immediately they say, okay, this is common in road runners. Um, it's not a, it's an operation you need to go under, but it's not big, it's something that can be dealt with. No problem, I pay for the operation myself. And that was my biggest mistake. Mm. Because the French team then felt that this is our asset. 
how dare anybody lay their hands on them. That is how important the players in Europe are to the clubs. That they refer to them as their assets. You can't come and break my house down if you don't own it. Even if you're renting, I must ask you permission if I want to paint. Mm. You understand? This, no. is, this is the investment. This is our investment. You can't make that decision to lay your hands on him. Now, I'm trying to just get onto the playing field. Why? I want to make under 23s to go to Olympics. This time is against you and you, when you get to that stage of your development, you will understand how desperate your football becomes. Because you played under 17, under 20, under 23 in how long? In the same year. In the same year. After under 20 World Cup, Mitch even give you the armband to say, you are now the captain. Okay, so now you want to make the under 23 team. Remember, you've played, you've played. But if you are not playing, you are not available for selection. Even if you, that same coach that's in charge now is the coach that made it possible for you to get the European contract. Mm. If you are not playing, you are not available for selection. I want to get over this injury, start playing as quick as possible, go to the Olympics. Okay, so I go and I go and see I, Mr. Koza. Yeah, this is the issue. He says, yeah, let's sort it out. Uh, I've known you from under 17, under 20. Um, you were a development product of the association. Uh, we tried, we get the best lawyers involved. I even get money up my side. I wasn't even supposed to sign for Paris because I signed already for the French team. I had a five year contract. I went there. Yes, your man, yes, you're signing on fee up front. I went straight to BMW in Hyde Park. <laughs> straight by the Z3. Same time. Automatically, all that pain from not playing is gone. Because why? There's a substitute to make me feel happy. I'm feeling like I'm in a convertible. And these are the things we use to just specify the difficulty we go through. And this so, is the mistake. Just briefly on, 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 on Paris. Um, yeah. You play some good football at Paris. Who are some of the guys um, that you play Luke, with? You must, you must understand something. That I was at that point, the confidence psychologically, even on performance based in training, I have never performed at such a high level because of the quality of my teammates. Yeah. You understand? So it is a clear uh, indication that if you are surrounded by the quality, you yourself will be taken to those heights. Uh, amazing training, amazing football. If it was just not for the red tape, mm -hmm. if it was just not for the, the boardroom issues. Who um, are some of the guys that were at Paris? Um, obviously, goalkeeper was Okpara. Um, Gababa. Um, who? Gababa. Gababa was there. Um, Papi was there. There was a guy, Thomas Nguana. Thomas Nguana yeah. yeah, Thomas Nguana, uh, Kamal Said, Brandon Silent, Clinton Larson, Warren Lewis, uh, Tabo Ingomeni, Benedict Velakazi, Joseph Makanya was the younger ones, mm. uh, Steve Likwalea. Um, uh, what a player that I'm going to mention now. We actually played again later on at Ajax, and we, there's no doubt, you can't, you can't buy class. And they still never another player like that in South Africa, Joseph Ngake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, a big leg, strong, fast, very clever and very humble guy. You know, so it was a team of uh, Guy Roger and Zeng. Yeah, yeah. You the remember defender. this guy, yes. From Gabon, yeah. Yeah, uh, Dennis Lota. Mm. So how don't you improve when you are with this type of quality every day? You're telling me Sundowns today is our national team. Then Paris is that, that team. That was... They, I don't think they will ever be that quality under the same umbrella ever again. Mm. You... I, I can't let you go without telling this story. After. <laughs> when you came back from Malaysia, apparently you threw a party that lasted for a month. <laughs> Excuse me? When you came back from Malaysia, yeah, look, you, you came back with money. That's the same house that I showed you, <laughs> Yes, yes. Now, now they introduced to me this drug called Cat. Yes, yes. Hey, I had, a, I had a, a dining room table. In the middle of the dining room table is a server. So if I turn it like this, 
Jokorin goes to me, I tell it like this, I told him to come to me, I tell it. This guy starts chopping the lines yeah. on this table. Stick it around the table. Chup. Your line, chup. Yeah. My line, chup. Yeah. Yes, sir. It feels like Hollywood. You've got a little bit of money, you okay. Now is where the devil starts playing. Yeah. The party don't stop. That table just kept on going around. For the whole month. You there is the remote control. Yeah. If the drugs run off, the merchant comes to the house. Yeah. The guys go and get it. And uh, you also talk about... days, bruh. Nothing. No, didn't stop. You also talk about an, inter an interesting story where Coach Peter Musimani saw you at the garage. Listen, when, during your difficult time. The only time. person, the only club, that offered to send me into a facility after I came to address the players on what I'm going through. And at that time, it wasn't clearly evident that I've deteriorated physically. So you could still hide it a bit, but it was there because the trots know you from when you were a young boy. Mm. Pizzo has been in the game for ages. He knows this and the story is out. So I'm telling them, I'm admitting to them, this is the problem. And uh, he wants to... He offers to send me to a facility to get help. That was sundowns. Yes, sundowns. But saying that, he puts 10,000 rand in my back pocket. So now... That was Coach Pizzo. Coach Pizzo. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much he's put in my pocket. Remember, I'm still a user. And so, when we get into the car, me and lovers, lovers say, how much is Pizzo put in your pocket? <laughs> hey, boss, don't ask me shit. How much is Pizzo put in your yeah. He says five. I say, ah, you lie. I'm not giving bro, you brought me here, I did you the favor, I came to talk, this is my life story. He says, okay, I'm taking you home. I said, no way, drop me in town. He said, what are you going to do in town? I said, I'll take the taxi home. I know where the taxi rang. I bought every color, every size, everything. I bought a kit bag, I bought small soccer balls, you know the small ones. Different teams, because when I get high, I'm going to imagine I'm pizza. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so in my room I've got all the balls after taking the taxi home, I've got all the drugs there. And yes, as I imagined even when they play I would I would try and imagine that I'm on pizza. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is how how the psychosis starts taking you to another level. Mm -hmm. You start believing you can influence games. If uh, if I kick the ball a hundred times against the wall and Sundowns is playing or Pirates is playing inside. One of them will score while I'm kicking the ball against the wall. If one of them scores, you believe it's because of you. You are the, you are the football god. Mm. Um, this is how psychotic you can become. But begging at the garage when all the money was gone years later, uh, one night, it was about, I think, close to 12 midnight, um, Pizzo pulls up at the garage. He says, boy, all we can do is pray, but don't lose hope. And he gives me some money again. Um, no problem. I do the same thing. Remember, I'm addicted. All I can think about is my next hit. So I go straight after Coach Pito leaves me. I go to, to the merchant. Go and buy my things. I come back. I'm happy. Mm. A life works and God works in mysterious ways. I start coaching again this month. My boys draw their first game out of 11 games. 10 games they win, they draw. So I just got in my car, uh, got I 20 I wouldn't have felt for me like the top of range Mercedes Benz because I haven't driven for yeah. so long, you know. So I, I face my players in Soweto, I take them back. But these boys, because they have drawn a game, it's the end of the world. I can see it in their faces. I stop by this garage so we can buy all of us a quarter and we can buy a scolding. So everybody at the garage knows me. They say, Coach, do all these people know you from football? I say, hey, boy, I, I wish I lost. I left such an impression that they could still remember my football now. They remember me from being a beggar at the same garage. And it's you guys that has made me feel like I am forgiven and life is worth living again. The same garage where we're eating is where I beg for food. Mm. It's where I beg for coring and where I beg for my next seat. Today I can bring you guys here and we can enjoy lunch. That when the attendant asked me, how much do you want to fill the tank? Because I used to sell my clothes to those attendants. I used to sell the microwave to those attendants. How much must be for your tank? Yes, bruh. 
You know when I said to the guy full tank is <laughs> well <laughs> You didn't believe it. And you remember when I went into isolation, there wasn't this thing of tapping. Yeah. When I was a beggar, I was wondering, how is this baby playing with the cell phone with, just doing this? Yeah. Yes, we know. I, I, now you just tap now. You can tap, yes, it was the best feeling in the world. Yeah. There's simple things in life. Yeah. Uh, how to respect people, how to love people, how to make others happy. Those are the things that life teaches you, but we cannot falter. And the ex-players will kill me for saying this. Mm. Um, the development structures of our own football, we just haven't used the term continuity. Uh, uh, going through all the fundamental stages of development in South Africa has given me a large part of my mentality to never give up. Junaid, I think uh, the last few questions now. Yeah. Obviously, your life has been has been eventful. Um, yeah. Or even maybe eventful is not is an understatement. Sure. But do you look back with regrets, or you just yes. say you know it was what it was? A bright spark answer now because I've mentioned the bright sparks in that I've been in touch with, um, and to give you an honest answer, I'm going you know, to give you an answer that would make sense. I regret the things that I haven't done. It's okay. What do you? What is the thing that bothers you that you did do? Um, I still feel that no matter how dedicated I was. I didn't use every opportunity to improve myself as a player, as a human being. You know, when you are younger, you take the ball with you everywhere. So at training, your coach tells you weave through cones, do passes. Now, when you are younger, you take the ball with you everywhere. So if you are at the car wash, there's three chairs there. Those are your cones. There's a wall there you can practice passing. So the minute I turn professional, that hunger stopped. I needed to then go home and continue. Even if I had to introduce my girlfriend to football and say, hey, let's keep the same method. The principle is allowed to move, but the subject doesn't change. So no matter what you achieve, what has been working for you, continue doing that. It's the principle moving, but the subject doesn't change. Keep playing, keep training hard, you know? So it doesn't mean that once you've turned professional, you have arrived. Mm. No matter how high the mountain is and now, there's always going to be one that's higher that you need to achieve. The dream never stops. And that is where the burden of the hunger took a backseat. Second last question. You are coaching the kids now. Yeah. Any ambitions of coaching the PSL in the future? Um, look, honestly, when I started coaching the kids, I had no desire to get involved in football at that level. But you must remember something, and that's because there was still a little bit of vulnerability and doubt. The minute the success comes in another area where you're able to, to a certain level, maintain the lifestyle that you used to, that football got you used to, you can now watch a game and analyze what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what you need to do, what you're overdoing, and you can now then go with your daily planners, weekly planners, season planners, monthly planners, in your mind. So now when you come to your next training session, uh, you remember your coaches, Trot, your father, Palacios, uh, Sheikh Mashaba, Gordon Ingerson, uh, John Lathan, and um, you remember, so you remember now how to put these things together. And once it gets to that point, you find yourself itching to get back into competitive soccer, where it's result driven. Because remember, at youth level, we use the excuse because they don't win every game. That winning is not everything, it's about development. Winning is not the only thing. Winning is everything. Mm. You've got to teach them how to win in every way possible. Yeah, you know, I was just saying that if you were to stand in front of a Junaid, a, 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 a 20-year-old Junaid Hartley, what do you tell him? Uh, firstly, I would tell him that, listen, if you take the word life and you take the word risk, similar in comparison, but cannot be separated. Why? Because they both got the letter I as the second letter. But please always remember 
you will never settle. I will never settle to be second best. So you need to take risk, but you also now need to take calculated risk. So this is what football is going to teach you. When to take the risk, when not to take the risk. You know, and it also depends on what position you play in. And obviously, be honest to yourself. If someone is better than you, steal with the eye, it's going to improve your own game. And this will actually make you ending up a better player than what he is. But never doubt yourself. In life, you're always going to have somebody who doubts you. Don't let that somebody be you. Um, Jeanette? I can't uh, thank you enough. Thank you guys, and yes, I hope, I hope we. I hope I'm a little bit. I'm hope I'm making sense. I'm not. <laughs> no, you do. I'm not there where I want to be, but yeah. thank God to you guys, uh, to the to the family and to the nation, because back then what differentiated my 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 age group of of and the privilege of being associated with so many quality players is that South Africa. Was a, was a family. You know... Unity in diversity. I mean, really. You know, we've been talking so much that I haven't forgotten to ask you about the fun experiences because we're, we're, we're fun in tennis now. Yeah. Maybe let's close on that one. All right, let's close on that one until I get more than my five cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it shouldn't be more nah, cats, eh? No, it's five, it's five, but... Um, you know, we obviously say things to benefit ourselves. If we have to say, okay, yeah, but I'll be honest with you. Uh, as good as everybody else was, there still isn't another player who has scored as much goals at junior national level than me. I will say that confidently. Mm. But the word goals is so broad because when you had to achieve the ultimate, you didn't use your development to give you the experience to maintain that. Others use their development experience to reach the pinnacle. You need to be honest with yourself and make sure and try to not let it happen again in the future to others. Mm. But Bafana was good? It was good. Um, first call up Clive Barker, second call up was a given. Yeah. It was true. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. uh, yeah, I mean, really, uh, I knew that before. When I knew I'd get a call up before the, the club even received the, the notification. Because it's somebody that identifies the qualities in people mm. that can take them to another level. And we had differences at the end of our career in Marisburg, but he's, I think he's too broad-minded to let that be something of concern. I think what I've experienced after that, and even I experienced difficulties while I was at Marisburg, not because of drugs, in my personal life. And uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, and I ask forgiveness from my family, my children, my ex-wives, uh, my children's mothers, and I ask forgiveness from the nation. And I say to you, please, let's stand together because what we are facing now is so big. It is so big. We are facing an invasion of that is not normal. This is forces that that can wipe us out. It can wipe us out. It doesn't only affect me as the user. It affects everybody who is related to me. If you are my mother, if you're my sister, if you're my friend, if you're my teacher, if you are in my, if you're in my community, if you're in my community, if I smoke, it's okay. The other boy says it's okay. He'll smoke, mm -hmm. and the whole community, the whole family, is messed up. And today, our whole country is infected with this problem. Should I thank you very much? Thank you. Um, in my book, yeah, you were one of the most skillful players I've seen in South Africa. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, you know, you, you are going to be more about it. They say so, but you're as good as your last game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you played with some of the. You are one of the best players of our generation, and in your generations, you mentioned Steve. You mentioned sure. um, Steve Lukulia. You mentioned um, Tyrone Bartley. You mentioned yeah. Quinton Fortune. You mentioned Bradley Canel. Bradley Canel. So yeah. Villa Gazi. You ben, know, obviously the Bennys. You know, the, Benny. The Zubas, these were. Uh, these were, yeah, was, <laughs> these, uh, yeah, these were top, top, top and, footballers, and, and you were there. Sure, you were there. You sure. competed with them, and yeah. there were also younger players who came after yes, that. Yes, the Macanias. You know, um, so yeah. in my book, you are one of the best players of a generation, thank and you thank you very much for sharing your story. We, I hope that I hope we get through to one person, yeah, and uh, then that is part of the process part right of now. The process, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, let's make this difference. And I'm happy. And I'm you're looking, you're looking God, good. God's miracles is a knockaway. Yeah. You, if anything, you're in trouble. Yeah. Go back to the basis of your parents. Yeah. They told you. Go yeah. and pray. Thank you no very much. No matter who you pray to, go and pray. Yeah. Thank you very much for, that, you for entertaining us so as a footballer. Yeah. I really, really appreciate it. All right, thank yeah. you.